Welcome back to another video everyone. So today I am starting a brand new series on my channel. You already know what it is because you can see it and it's in the title. Crash Twin Sanity. One of my fellow Crash YouTubers, The Real Neil, is currently playing through this game for the first time over on his channel and I really want to just play the game after watching those videos. So definitely check out The Real Neil if you want to see someone's first reaction to this game because you're not going to find that here. We've got to watch the opening cutscene where Cortex blasts Coco. I can't believe that never got added as a skin for Cortex and CTR. This is part of a bigger series that I'm doing on the channel because in 2021 I want to do a series on every Crash game. I'm not going to do a Let's Play on every Crash game this year, just the ones that I haven't done one on yet. I've done Crash 1, done Crash 2, done Crash 3, Crash 4. Crash Tag Team Racing, I'm like nearly done with that series, I just haven't done an episode in about 7 months because I lost my save file on my emulator. But I'm going to finish that this year too by replaying the game and getting back to where I was. There we go. Thank you very much, chicken. I can now get this gem. I might even do a Nitro Kart series. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know yet. This being one of my favorites, I had to start with this one. So we're going to go down here and get this gem. I think there's a gem down here. Yeah, there is. Just up here. I'm not going to be 100% completing the Crash games that I played this year. I'm just going to be going through the main story, doing optional things here and there. Like this, for example. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know why I bother getting the gems in this. It unlocks, you know, some pretty cool concept art. But, um, well, this didn't even unlock a gem. This was just an extra life, but still. The gems unlock concept art, which is pretty cool, but, I mean, I'm not too interested in it. I've seen it already. I'll be collecting some of the gems along the way for two reasons. One, because it's actually fun to find them and, you know, complete the little challenges to get them. And two, because the game is incredibly short without them. It is I, Aku Aku. My duty is to protect you. You may summon me by breaking open these crates. Call me thrice, and I shall grant you special powers. Thank you very much, Aku Aku. Now let's pray that we don't die before the next checkpoint, because that cutscene is unskippable. So this, for example, I'm just doing this for a gem. You have to shoot the bombs into the statues, and then blow off the spikes so you can then go and collect the gem. Again, without the gems, this game is incredibly short. Without the gems, we could probably finish the main story in about five episodes. I've hated the Invincible Aku Aku. I mean, what is this? This is not Invincible Aku Aku. Doesn't last very long. Doesn't even work properly. He's not invincible. He's just not. I'm just going to get this gem. Uh, it should be pretty easy to get. Yeah, we just... Go. Yep, we've got him. Uh, I believe there is a... Did I just miss a gem? Yes, I did just miss a gem. When it's that simple, I have to get it. And then there is another one just here. Coming up on one of my favorite Crash characters. I guess we'll have to wait for that. Skunk. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, you! I've been doing this for ten stinking years! Back and forward, back and forward, and I'm sick of it! Well, I'm not gonna do it no more! You know what? Good on you, Skunk. I hope you have a very successful life here on out. I'm gonna let you live. I always loved this cutscene as a kid. Seeing, like, Dingo Dial, Pinstripe, Tiny, Crunch, Ripperoo, Koala Kong, Polar. I always loved it. It's just a shame that they didn't appear in the actual game. So we're going to do the uh, Cortex boss. I think this is a really solid boss fight for the first one in the game. It's one of my favorites, actually. Mainly because of the Mecha Bandicoot part that comes after. But still. Oh yeah, a little trick I learned as a kid. I think if you stand on this one, he never hits you. Because he doesn't follow you. He is completely scripted on which platforms he hits. And we're going to smack that back. Yeah, it's definitely this one. And then we go here. The music and Mecha Bandicoot is just everything about this was so cool when I was younger. And then the fact that you can actually play as Mecha Bandicoot later on in the game, that blew my mind. I mean, what wasn't cool about Mecha Bandicoot for my eight-year-old self? He's got a massive chainsaw, he shoots rockets. I mean, look at his design as well. There we go. Gonna get the cutscene of Dingo Dial and Ripperoo now. Dingo Dial literally says one word, but it's still one of my favorite cutscenes in the game. 
Because it's Dingo Dial and Ripperoo together in one scene. What isn't there to love about that? Now we're on to the, uh, I forgot what this level's called. I never really pay attention to level names in this game. To me, the whole game is just one continuous level. But, um, yeah, I can't remember. Let's just pause it. Cavern Catastrophe, that's it. Where we're rolling, and it, you know, fun fact, if you stay, if you idle for a few minutes, you will get the animation where Cortex spanks it. There And there it is. You just, you should have expected me to do that, to be honest. I'm gonna go through here. I don't know... Um, sorry, but I want this extra life. But I've got to be careful down here. There's a few lives that you don't want to miss, and a few nitro crates too. Oh no, sorry, that's on this bit. The nitro crates are on this bit. And here's the gem. Shit! Okay, now, where is the... It's not down there. Oh no, it's further up. There's a... I think there's another gem you can get by bouncing on the platforms. But yeah, I think it's just up here. Speed past that. Here it is. Um, w am I willing to lose a life over this? Shh, maybe. Maybe not. I don't have to lose a life if I'm careful. Okay. One more and we're good. You can't overshoot that and go straight off the edge. And now we're going to go up against the ants. What are they called? Ant invaders or something? Always hated this bit for some reason. It's because they all swarm you. And again, with Crash to Insanity just being Crash to Insanity, you die very quickly. But, pretty simple, we've done it. Oh, two lives down there. Thank you very much. Wait, is there any down there? No, oh, just an Akaraku Kree. But we don't need that because invincibility doesn't do shit in this game. So I'm probably going to be playing up until the Iceberg Lab. I think that's a good place to stop for this video. I think it will make it a reasonable length, not too long, not too short. And we get to do the second boss fight, which is Tikimon. Bollocks. <laughs> Give me that life, I need it. No! What? If you don't spin those platforms within a certain amount of time, they will drop back down. There we go, we did it this time. And that's it for that section. In this cutscene, Crash can skate afterwards. Yeah, look at this. I could do this forever if I didn't have to hit that box over there. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we risk it for a life? I think yes. And now we're out of here. Um, I think there's a... Yeah, this is where the evil twins come in, isn't it? Let's play mind games. This is the part where you run away screaming. I'm probably not going to play the full-length cutscenes in these videos, but I'll show clips here and there, I think. So that does that, which then... What does that do? I have no idea. Well, that gives us a gem. There is something over here. Now, what can we use to... Chickens, of course! Who do you go to when you need to blow up a nitro crate? Chickens. And that will give us access to this gem. Okay, now let's go up to Farmer Ernest, one of the franchise's most beloved characters. And for that reason, he never made a return ever again. Even Nitro Fuel didn't give him a second chance. No, wait, it isn't Farmer Ernest yet. We're completely skipping a section. It's the try bit. How could I forget? And then the Papu Papu runaway section. Oh, and the bloody runaway section where you have to help Cortex. How am I forgetting so much of this game? You know where he's being chased by the... Wait, that actually might be out here. Yeah, it is actually. That's this bit. Now, let's not die at this bit because this is like a 30 second cutscene and it's unskippable. You have to watch it every time you die. There he is. Papu Papu himself. So yeah, for those of you who have never played this game, we now have to guide Cortex along a path. Oh, sorry, we have to make the path for him. Destroy any traps that are in his way. 
So we're going to have to let him do that. We're going to have to spin that. Extend the bridge just in time. And I'll grab that while I'm here. And die at the same time. Damn it, now I have to watch that again. Well, the good thing is I just remembered I'm on an emulator. I can make my own save states. <laughs> this time we have to actually wait for Cortex himself to lift that for us. Yep, you just have to jump on that. Oh crap, he's getting close. Too close. Have to wait for him again. I think this is where the bear starts chasing him. That is one slow bear. And you know what? I always try to kill the bear here. Like, I would always drop this down on him. But, nope, it goes straight through him. And this bit usually got me. You can't go as soon as he opens the path. You have to wait. Or you'll accidentally kill him. And now Cortex has been taken away by Papu Papu's tribes. So, we have to go and save him, I guess. This is one of my favorite sections of this beginning level. Well, I know we're not in the same level. I, I think we're on, like, level 4 or 5 at this point. He's looking. And now I can go. Now I can go. I'd usually get greedy here and try and clear too much of the path. And then he starts looking and he captures me, so I'm not going to do that. I'm even going to crouch here. This guy's got to be one of the worst watchmen ever because he will just completely miss that tree blowing up right in front of his eyes. Okay, let's try and get this gem then. It's quite clear what you have to do. You just have to spin the rocks to hit the nitro crates. There we go. But this is the real pain. Because look at how there's no indication as to where you're going to land on this thing. But I made it. So Cortex is over there with the crystal. We have to work our way up to him. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to smash this worm so many times that eventually it's going to move all the way next to Cortex and we can jump on top of it to reach him. Banging soundtrack at this bit, mate. Okay, last bounce. And that will put us next to him. Crap. Yeah, again, decent chase there. It, it, it's okay. It's nothing special. Although it can be tricky at times. Just landing the jumps. But for the most part, they are never going to get close to you. Missed the gem there. But I can't go back now, unless I die. Yeah, generally they are never going to get anywhere even close to you. There's not really anything to get stuck on. It's mainly just holes that you have to watch out for. Never mind, that's the whole thing. Like I said, wasn't anything special. His former Ernest. The farmer's market is tomorrow, and my wumpa trees won't grow. For my orchard is riddled with greedy worms. If you rid my land of these pests, I'll give you this power crystal. Damn, my boy deserved a second chance in CTR Nitro Fueled. Well, we had to do the bloody task anyway, so I don't know what the point of paralyzing him was. Okay, this is the last part of the video, the Tiki Mon boss fight. I will admit, I used to be scared of this boss when I was younger. It's generally very easy though, just literally keep running. If you don't stop running, his attacks will never hit you. He's got the punching attack, the laser attack, and then this is where you throw Cortex in his mouth which takes the health point away from him. Oh yeah, he's got that attack as well. But again, if you keep moving, it will never hit you. And I always found it strange how, even after you kill him, if you... I swear, I never usually get hit by that attack when I play this game. But it's okay, we've done it. Well, as long as we don't get hit by these guys. Oh, nuts. There's nuts. It's just funny, because if I touch his body now, I'll die and I'll have to redo the entire fight. In fact, I've just made a save state so I can load back if I actually do have to redo it. Just watch. It actually kills you. Now, where does it put me back? Before the boss fight. That is ridiculous. No, thank you. So anyway, that is going to be it for this video. In part two, we'll be heading off to the Iceberg Lab. You can see it over there in the distance. What are we going to be doing in that video? Well, there's going to be quite a few boss fights in that one, I think.
what you're actually meant to do is jump back on here. There we go. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you all in part two. Well, I'll see you all in a different video because I'm not doing part two for my next video, but you know what I mean.